Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's uh, orientation orientation session for eVet sites. Uh, this week we are going to be focusing on images and tables. If you are interested in a general orientation on how to use the editor, feel free to give us a call at this number and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one session with you. So I'll be demonstrating on this blue example website. Um, if you do want to follow along on your own website, please feel free to get logged into your own site. And if you're having any trouble seeing my screen or hearing me, uh, please feel free to let me know in the question screener. You can also give this number a call for any uh, technical, su uh, technical support. Excuse me. And if you have any questions while I'm going along, please feel free to ask those in the question screener, and I will get to those as they come in. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and get logged in. And to do that, I'm going to use this key down here at the bottom left. Username is always administrator. If you're still on a trial and you haven't changed your password, you're going to use the one that was emailed to you. Otherwise, you'll use the one that you've changed it to. OK, so I'm now logged in. And I know that because I can see the editing options up here at the top. So again, this orientation is going to focus on images and tables. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to discuss images with you all. Um, so you do have full control over all of the images that are on your website, and we do urge you to take advantage of that. Um, it's a good idea to customize all of the photos on your site. It gives your site a more personalized feel. You'll want to add photos throughout of your staff members, your doctors, the inside and outside of your clinic. You can do something like a clinic tour to give your clients an idea of what your hospital looks like. Um, patients that you see there, that's always a good idea to incorporate in your site. And of course, your logo. If you have a logo for your website or for your clinic, you'll definitely want to include that in the website. And you'll want to put that somewhere up here in the header. If you don't have a logo for your clinic, uh, we do have designers here that can help you create one. You would just have to email us any ideas that you have, and then we can send you some options and work with you on coming up with something that you love. So if you are interested in that, feel free to give us a call or send us an email. So to get us started with images, we do have template images. So those are going to be the images that are built within the template that you can't edit through, let's say, edit content. So in this particular template, these are the template images, these ones that are scrolling through here. So to change any image that's built into your template, you're going to go to Admin Home. That'll open up this new window for you. And I can see here that the current template I'm on is this cherry template. And you'll go to Change Template. If you want to stay on the same template that you're on but just change the photo, you would just hit Continue here. Or you can choose a new theme completely. Um, so to give you some ideas of different template photos, on this particular theme, it's that cat and the dog in the top left. On this one, it's that little uh, lab or golden retriever that's up at the top right. On this one, it's these three photos that are underneath the header. So they can appear in different places, and you do have control of what those look like. I'm going to go ahead and stay on this same theme and just hit Continue here. And now I have the option to select the corresponding pictures. So again, these are ones that rotate through. Not all of our templates offer rotating images, um, but it does, in this particular case, they do. So I could choose a different set of images here by just clicking on one. And if you do want to use your own pictures within the template, if you want to have photos of your own patients rotating through, or if it's a static image, we can just do one, uh, feel free to email those to us, and our designer can work those in for you. I'm going to go ahead and click on this to change it. And then the last option here is selecting a color scheme. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is as well by just clicking Continue. And now if I go back out to the website, I now have a different set of images rotating through here. So that's how you would change the images that are correlated with the template itself. As far as images that are within your website, so for instance, this image here that's just built within this page, you can edit any of those on your website. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into Edit Content. That's where you'll go to edit any basic text or images on a page. And let's just say I want to delete this one completely. To delete any image on your website, you just click on it to highlight it. You'll notice it's now blue, so I know it's selected. And then you can just hit Delete on your keyboard, and that'll completely wipe it out. So just to show you what that looks like, I'm going to hit Save here. 
and now it's just a basic text web page. I could leave it like this, but I'm going to go ahead and add in my own photo. So I'm going to go to Edit Content. Anytime you want to add an image, just make sure you put your cursor where you want the image to appear. So in this case, I want it to appear on the left side of this text. If you wanted to add one down here at the bottom, you can just put your cursor down here, and that will be where the photo appears once you add it in. So just make sure that you do have your cursor blinking where you want the picture to be added. And you have two options here to get to the area to insert an image. You can either right click with your mouse and go to this insert image, insert edit image option. That's the second option for you. You can also get to that same area by clicking on this button here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, insert edit image. That'll bring up this small screen here. This source field is asking where you want to pull the photo from. So you need to tell the system which photo you want to use here. To do that, you click on this little folder with the magnifying glass, and that opens up the file manager. The file manager houses all of our stock images that Evet Sites offers. These are all safe for you to use. Um, we do categorize them by species. So if you wanted a picture of a cat, just come into the felines folder. Um, so these are all sorted out for you. You can also upload your own, and I'll go over that in just a moment. But let's say for now I just wanted to select one of the stock images that are offered here. I'm going to click into here, and I can browse all of these images and pick one. I'm going to go ahead and choose this first one here. And as soon as you click it, you'll notice that it automatically fills in this source field. That's telling the system that this is the particular image that you want to use, and then this is the size that it comes in right now. So right now it's going to appear as 400 by 400, and we'll take a look at what that looks like. You also have this image description field. This is a great place to add in a little description about what the picture is. Um, this also helps with your SEO, which is your search engine optimization. This is another area where Google is going to pick up this text. And anywhere that you have the word listed, that does help your presence on Google. So in this case, I could put our hospital cat ginger. And what's going to happen is when a client hover, hovers over that picture, it will show this text here. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in as is. I have an image description that I've added, the source that it's pulling from, and the size that it comes in. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll notice when I hover over this, it says that line that I just put in there in the image description. So I'm going to go ahead and save this just so we can see what it looks like. So I notice a few things wrong right off the bat. First of all, the picture is very large. I want to go ahead and get that resized so it's smaller. And something happened here with the text. It's no longer wrapping around starting at the top. It's now got this gap here in the middle, and the text is pushed down underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into Edit Content, and I'm going to start by resizing the image. To do that, just double click on the picture, whatever picture you're working with, and you can change these dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and change it down to 300. So all I have to do is change that initial number, click out here anywhere in the gray, and it will automatically resize that other portion so that the image doesn't become distorted. So now it's 300 by 300. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and you'll notice that that made the image smaller. I still have this issue of the text dropping all the way down to the bottom rather than wrapping. So I'm going to double click again. And you'll notice here, right now we've been working under the General tab. There's also an Advanced tab. These are some other options that you have when you're adding in a photo. This is where you'll go anytime you want to wrap the text around an image. So in this particular case, I want my image on the left and my text wrapping on the right. So to do that, I need to tell the system that I want to align the photo on the left. So you have this Align option here. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to align on the left. You'll notice it automatically added in this float left style here. That's telling the system where you want it to go, and this automatically fills in for you. If I were to change that, it's going to automatically update that. So you don't have to worry about filling any of this in manually. It will go ahead and enter that in after you've made your selections here. So I'm aligning to the left. I'm just going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. So now I have my photo on the left. My text is wrapping on the right. I'm going to go ahead and save so we can see this on the live page. And it's a little hard to tell with this picture because it has a white background. 
that you may notice that the text is now bumping up right along that picture. So the border of my image is right here, and the text is running right along against it. If this had a colored background, that would be a lot more pronounced. So what I want to do is I want to give this a bit of a buffer so that there's a little bit of space between the image and the text that's wrapping. So to do that, I'm going to go back into the photo, double click on it, go back to this advanced tab, and I'm going to add a right margin. If my photo were on the right, I would want to add a left margin because the text would be wrapping on the left. So this is going to depend on where you have the photo aligned and where you want the text to wrap around it. So the margin is going to be read as a number in pixels. So it's good to start with anywhere between 0 and 20. I'm going to go ahead and do 10. And that's going to give me a 10 pixel border between that picture and the text that's next to it on the right. So now you'll notice here's the edge of our picture that has now pushed that out. And it's no longer bumping right along the image. I'm going to hit Save here so we can see what that looks like. And I could make that area larger. All I would have to do is go in and change that 10 pixels to something like 15 or 20. And you can go in there as many times as you need to make those changes until you get it looking like you want. OK, so to go over what we just did, we added in the photo by using this button here in the source field. I added in a stock image, and it automatically put in this URL here. I added the image description, which again helps with your SEO. You can put whatever text you'd like here. Um, it's a good idea to put the name of your hospital or whatever is describing the image. We changed the dimensions of the photo. And again, to do that, you just have to change the first number, click out, and it will resize that other portion for you. And you can always reset to the original dimensions if something becomes distorted or you don't like the size that it changed to. And then using this advanced tab, we have aligned the photo on the left-hand side. And we're wrapping the text on the right with a 10 pixel margin. Some other options that you have in here. You can add a top and bottom margin. If you have a lot of text wrapping around this that goes all the way around the image, you would want to add those in so that the text isn't right up along the top or the bottom of the image. And then you also have the option to add a border to your picture. So you can choose any color here. You can also add in a custom color code here if you want it to match let's say, the color in your logo exactly, you can put in that HTML color code there. And if you need any help with figuring out what color something is, just let us know, and we can help you uh, find the code for that. So let's just say I wanted to use an orange color. I'm going to go into this orange, just select that one. I'll hit OK. And now I need to give my border a width. And again, this is red in pixels. I'm going to go ahead and do 10. So that's telling it that I want a border of this color, and I want it to be 10 pixels. And there we have it. And I can go back in and change that color if I want to, or I can change the size of the border. So I'm going to hit Save here. So now we've added in our own picture. We took out that one that was initially there. We've wrapped our text on the right, given it a little bit of a buffer here, and we added a border to the image. So I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break just to see if there are any questions about adding images either to the template or basic web pages, or any questions about wrapping the text, changing the size of the picture. So if you have any questions about anything relating to images so far, please feel free to put that in the question screener. OK, I haven't seen any come in so far, but if you do think of one while I'm talking, please feel free to submit that. Um, one last thing that I did want to do with images was show you how to upload your own image. So if you have an image right now that's saved on your computer that you want to add to the website, you can do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump to a different page to show you how to do that. I go to. I'll go to the services page. So again, I'm going to edit content. And let's say I wanted to put a picture here of one of our doctors uh, performing surgery on a dog. So what you can do is, again, you're going to put your cursor where you want the picture to appear, right click, go to insert edit image. And then you're going to want to tell it what source you want to pull from. 
And rather than selecting in the file manager from one of these stock images, we're actually going to hit this upload button. So I'm going to hit upload. That brings up this screen here. You can either drag and drop your files into this window, or you can click this Add Files button. Um, just for example's sake, I'm going to go ahead and put in this picture of my dog. So all I did was double click on that. And you'll notice it's sitting at 0%. You do need to tell the system to start uploading it by clicking on this button in order for it to be added to the website. It won't automatically start uploading for you. So once I click that Upload button, I see it crawls up to 100%. So now I know it's 100% uploaded to the site. I can go ahead and close this. And any time that you're uploading your own image, it will automatically have it selected already. So this is the one I just uploaded. It's already selected for me. Now all I have to do is hit Insert. So this is telling me the dimensions that it is. I'm probably going to want to change those, but I'm going to go ahead and see what it looks like for now. So now I have my own photo of my dog on the website. And now from here, I can change the settings. So I could wrap the text. I could align it to the left or the right. I can change the dimensions. Again, just changing one portion, clicking out, and the other size gets changed. I can put a description here. And again, that will be what you see when you hover over the image. And then let's go ahead and wrap it. So let's align it to the left. We're going to give it a right margin of 10. And now that text that was beneath it is wrapping around on the right. So that's how you'll add your own images to the website by using that Upload button. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into Tables now. Um, so I'm going to jump over to this Staff page, which is already set up within a table. When you do start with a trial, it's already set up in a table for you, so you can kind of just plug and chug. But I'm also going to go over how to create your own tables and how to manipulate the tables. So why do we use tables? Uh, we use tables so that we can get uniform alignment and spacing on a page. And this is important, especially for mobile devices. So if your clients are looking at your website on a cell phone or a tablet, by having information within a table, it's going to allow everything to collapse down correctly. So if you don't have information in a table, it can often cause um, information to run off the page or stack on top of each other awkwardly or kind of overlap. So having things within a table, it will allow everything to collapse down as it should. Uh, to give you an example of what your website looks like on a mobile device, you can always shrink down your screen. And as you collapse it in, you can see what it looks like. So this would be about a tablet size. Give your menu up here. These are the template images. And then as you scroll down, you see all of the information within the table is still aligning properly. Um, you can even shrink this down more to see how it will look on a cell phone. So if this weren't in a table, this might shoot over to the left. This picture might move up over here. So tables are going to help you manipulate it on different screen sizes. OK, so um, when do you want to use a table? Any time that you have a lot of repetitive information that needs to look uniform on your page. Any time you want to align text and images. Um, examples of when you want to use tables would be on the staff page, like we're looking at now. Also, in an hours table over here, this is set up within a table. And I'll show you some other examples as well later on in the orientation. So in this particular table, I'm going to jump into Edit Content. This is what the table looks like within the editor. So I know that it's set up in a table because I have all these little dashed lines wrapping around the information. And I also see these little squares. That's telling me that this is a table. This particular table is made up of two columns. This is the first column with all of the pictures. This is the second column with all of the biographies. And it's made up of three rows right now. So we have a row for Dr. Jen Smith, and then we have this buffer row, which is giving us space between the two of them. And then we have a row here for Dr. John Smith. So you have the option to add additional rows and columns when you already have a table set up. So to do that, you would right click within the table. So you, anytime you want to work within the table, you just click inside of it. You'll notice those boxes show up. And then you can right click to change the properties or add additional information. So if I wanted to add another column, 
I right-click, I go to this column option, and I have the choice to insert a column before or after. So if, if I did before, it's going to give me a column between the bio and her picture. If I did after, it's going to add a third column off on the right. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to put one in after. So now I have this third column here. Let's say I wanted to put all of the degree or school information into one column. I could do that here and start adding that, and it, it will drag down all the way through the entire table. So I don't only get an additional column here, I get it throughout the entire table. So now I have three columns for the whole table, and I still have three rows. You can also delete columns. So if I decided I actually didn't want my own column for this, I go back down to column and delete it. Anytime you're deleting a column, you do just want to make sure that your cursor is blinking within the column you're trying to delete. If you were to make a mistake, though, and delete the wrong one, you can always do this undo button, and that'll add it back in for you. You also have the option to add additional rows. So let's say I added some new staff members and I needed to add them to this table. I'm going to go into this last cell here, right click, and I'm going to use the row option. I'm going to insert row after. And I'm not going to add my staff member here because, again, I need that buffer row between the two staff members to give me a little bit of a space. So I'm just going to add another row after that. And then I would put my staff member into here. So I would do their bio and their photo. And to add a photo to the table, it's just like we did on the, the home page. You're just going to right click within that cell and do the Insert Edit Image option. So let's just say I want to add in a picture of a dog. So now that's going to add that right there, and then I would add the bio on the right. So you can add as many columns or rows as you need. You just want to make sure that you're adding them in the correct place. So if I wanted to add a row before her bio, after her picture, I could do Insert Column Before, and that's going to put it here. So you can add them wherever you need to and manipulate the table as you see fit. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. So any questions about how to add a new staff member, how to add additional rows or columns or delete them? OK, great. So in this particular case, the table was already built for us. I'm going to go ahead and go to a new page and show you how to start a table from scratch. So if you're working on a page that doesn't have a table set for you already and you want to build one, let's go ahead and go over how to do that. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to add a new page. So if you're not familiar with how to add a new page to your website, you just go to Edit Menu. And you can either add a top-level menu item, which will fall within the menu that you see at the top of your page, or you can add a sub-level menu item that's under an existing category. So I'm going to go ahead and add a Clinic Pets page. Save. So now I have a blank page here, and I'm going to go ahead and add a table to it. So I want to add a table that's going to hold all of the Clinic Pets images and then maybe a little blurb about them on the side. So it's going to look very similar to the staff page but with different information and maybe a different size. So to insert a table, and you can do this on any page you're working on, if you already have content on the page, just put your cursor where you want the table to be put in on the page and then add it in from there. So I'm going to go to Table, Insert Table. And then this is where I'm going to select how many cells I want within the table. So each blue highlighted square does represent a cell. So if I were to just do a one by one, it's just going to be one cell. Um, if I were to do two by one, it'll be two columns and one row. So I'm going to go ahead and do a two by five. So I'm going to have two columns, five rows, for a total of 10 cells. And you'll notice when you first insert a table, Again, if I click in it, I see those little squares appear. I know it's a table. Um, you'll notice that it's really collapsed down pretty tiny. To get inside of the cells, you just need to click in whichever one you want to go into, and then they'll expand out for you. And as you add information, it will open up. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and add my first clinic pet. So I'm going to right-click, Insert Edit Image, 
And then I could either upload one from my computer or grab one from here. I'm just going to use the photos that are in here. And I'm going to take this dog here. And again, we can put our image description here. I'm just going to put Milo, our dog. So now I have this photo in this top left cell. This is going to be the first cell of the table. And you do have options within each cell. So if I wanted to align this picture in the middle or the right or the left, you can do that here as well, just like you would when you're adding in a photo normally. So I can align this in the center. That'll center it within this cell. And I'm going to go ahead and resize it since it's a little large. So now I have my first cell, my first clinic pet, and then I can put his bio over here on the right. And I can make this bold. And then I would just go down here to this one. I could either add some space here so that the next bio and photo aren't right up on top of each other, or I could just do the next one here as well. And then I'll go to this third cell within this column, and I'll add my next clinic pet. I'm going to change this to 200. Add a description there. And again, I'm going to align this in the center. And then I can put a bio over here. Go ahead and make that bold so that it looks the same as the others. And I'm going to hit Save here. So now I've started a table, and I can keep going from here. I could add an additional column. I could add additional rows as we get new clinic pets. Um, one thing that I did want to point out about tables is that when you do first add in a table, it is set to 100%. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if you right-click within the table and you go to Table Properties, this is going to show you the height, width, and percentage of the table. So the width is automatically set to 100% anytime you're adding in a new one. That is telling the system to take up 100% of the page. If you were to change this to a number, it's going to read it as pixels. So let's say you change this to 500. It will read it as 500 pixels, and you don't want to do that. Um, that's because if you were to shrink down your screen and the screen was smaller than 500 pixels, it's not going to have anywhere to go. Um, this causes text to run off the page. It causes the table to collapse awkwardly. So anytime you want to change the width, you do want to keep it as a percent. So if you wanted the table to be a little bit smaller, you could change this, let's say, to 50%. And then that will shrink it down here. Once you've changed the size of the table, you can also align it. Um, so I can go to Table Properties, and I can align it to the left, the center, or the right. So if I wanted it in the middle, I would click Center. I accidentally moved that over. So that's if you ever want to change the size of the table. So just make sure that you're changing the percentage of it and not actually putting in pixels. So if I were to do something like this, it's going to read that as pixels. And again, this can cause it to run off the screen or collapse awkwardly on a mobile device. I'm going to go ahead and change this back to 100%. If you want to change the width of just one column, you can do that as well. So if I wanted the bio over here to be taking up more of the page than the pictures, you can just right click within the column and go to Cell, Cell Properties, and you can give it a width. So let's say I want this to take up 80% of the table, and I only want my pictures to take up 20%. I can change this to 80%, hit OK, and now this column is taking up 80% of the table, while this is only taking up 20%. We're still adding up to 100%, so that doesn't cause any awkwardness, um, but now this part is 80% of this page, and this is 20%. So if you have long bios, or you don't want the pictures to look very large, you can always change the percentage of the column. Um, to give you another example of that, I'm going to go back to Cell, Cell Properties. I could change this to 60, and that's going to push that back out a little bit. So that's always an option as well if you want to manipulate the sizing of the tables. Um, again, just make sure that anytime you're changing the entire table properties 
or the cell properties that you are using that percentage sign in there. You also have the option to give the table or cells colors and borders. So if you wanted to have one particular cell stand out, you could give it a color. So again, I'm going to go to cell and cell properties. And that's telling the system that I only want this change to happen within this one cell here, this one square where we have Milo Clinic dog. I'm going to go to cell properties. And I'm going to go to the advanced tab. And here's where I can add a border. Um, so I can either just do a border color, which will just wrap around the edges of it, or I can do a background color, which will fill the entire area of the cell. I'm going to go ahead and do a background just to show you what that looks like. So let's say I want this to stand out. I'm going to make it yellow. And you don't need to give it a, a pixel or anything since it's just going to fill that cell. Hit OK. And now just that cell has this yellow color. You can also do that for the entire table. So if you wanted to give the entire table a different color, you can do that as well. If you've already given one cell a color, it will leave it that color and just do the rest of the table in the other color. You can also, in table properties, do a border color. So if you wanted this to stay white, uh, but you just wanted it to have a border of red, you can do that as well. And now I have a border here. So there are many different ways you can manipulate tables. Um, you can change the coloring of them. You can change the size of them. You can, of course, add new columns or rows as you need to. And again, this is really important for collapsing information down on mobile devices and just getting pages to look uniform. I'm going to go ahead and save this so we can see what it looks like. And you'll notice, too, that even though we have additional rows where we didn't put any information, that's not showing up here. So if you want, you can always add additional rows to your table just so you have kind of a placeholder for yourself and you remember where to put information in. But you can just leave them empty until you're ready to fill them. So here we have two rows that are completely empty right now and just ready for when I want to add a new clinic pet into the table. If you were to add an additional column, however, it will show up here as a white space. Um, it's only not showing the rows because they appear down here and there's nothing in them right now. The column will manipulate the table enough that it shows some blank space. OK, so another thing that you can do is you can add a table within a table. So if you have one table set up, but you need to put multiple pieces of information inside of one cell, you can do that as well. Um, when might you want to do that? If you have a staff page and you want to put multiple pictures of the staff members inside of their bio, you can do that as well. Um, so let me show you how to add tables within tables. So what you'll do is, let's say we wanted to add some more pictures of Felix into here. If you right click, or I'm sorry, if you go up to table, you can insert another table within this table. So let's say I have three more pictures of Felix that I want to add in here. I'm just going to create a three-cell table. And now I have this tiny little table in here. And I know that it's in there because it's got those squares around it and these dashed lines. And now I have the option to add some information inside of this table, which will appear within this cell. So I can add some pictures here. Resize this and I'll center it. And we'll add another one here. OK, so now I, have, I still have two columns in the whole table, and I still have three rows. I've just added another table within Felix's bio to add some additional pictures. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now I have, again, the same looking table, but now these photos are uniformly put in as well. So you can add tables within tables. Um, another place that this works great is if in your header you want to put social media icon buttons. 
you can do a table uh, for your clinic name, your clinic address, and then another table down here for your social media button. So it's just another great way to manipulate the page and make it look uniform. So if there are any questions about tables or if you have any questions about adding images or anything that we've gone over, please feel free to put it in the question screener. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through some different ways that tables are used so that you can see what they look like. Um, for example, on this poisonous plants page, this is set up within a table. So we have a lot of information here. We've just organized it within this table so that it looks uniform. And to see what this looks like, just come into here. So again, I click in here. I see these little boxes. That tells me it's within a table. This table has a black border. And it's made up of four columns and a ton of rows. So if you wanted to add to this table, you could just click in here, do row, insert row after, and that will automatically keep all of the um, borders and everything that we already have outlined on here. And then you can just add in additional plants. That's one example of a larger table. Um, I want to show you two websites that have a great use of tables on their home page. So we have this site here. This is all set up within a table. So this is one table up here where they put this information. And then down here, this is another table. And they've used this table to show their clinic services, their boarding, their doctors. So there are many different ways you can manipulate and use the tables. Um, on this particular page, they've done it on the home page to outline all of that information. And I'll show you another one, too. This one, they also use the table on the home page to uh, showcase their doctors that they have at the clinic. So this is all within a table. This is four columns. And then they've just added the information inside of those columns. Um, one more that I want to show you that uses a table within a table is this website here. So this header area is all set up within a table. They have a column here with their logo, a second column here with their contact information, another column here with appointment hours, and then they've done a table within a table here with all of their social media buttons. And again, if we were to collapse this, it's all going to shrink down properly. If that weren't within a table, these would be scattered all over. This would be shoved over to the side. So this allows everything to collapse correctly for mobile devices. So just another great use of a table. Here's another table here. So we have um, two columns here with this information listed in it. And they just align that right underneath this picture. So just some different examples of how to add tables into your website and when they're useful. OK, so we do have a question that came in. I'm trying to delete a row on the site, but it's deleting the entire table. OK, so you want to make sure that when you're deleting the row, let's go back to our table. So when you're deleting the row, you want to make sure that your cursor is within the row that you want to delete. So if I wanted to delete to delete this row here. I want to make sure that my cursor is blinking inside of it. And then if I right click, I'm going to go to Row and Delete Row. It should only remove the row that you have highlighted. Um, again, to do that, I went, I right click, Row, Delete Row. And that'll take out that bio that we just had. You can also undo. So if you did accidentally delete your entire table, just hit Undo, and that'll add that back in for you. Um, if that didn't help you and you're still having trouble deleting that row, feel free to give us a call and we can log into your computer and remotely connect and see what's going on and help you get it deleted. Um, but definitely make sure you have your cursor blinking in the row that you're trying to delete. Right click, go to row, and delete the row. Um, if you were to right click and go to delete table, that will delete the whole table. It doesn't sound like that's what you're doing though. Um, so again, if you're having trouble just deleting one row, give us a call and we can help you out. If you have a table that is made up of just one row and you delete that row, it will delete the entire table. So, or if you have a table 
where you only have one row filled in and you delete that row, it might look like your entire table is deleted because there's no longer any information inside of it. Um, so hopefully that helped you, Corey, but if you are still having trouble, feel free to give us a call. And our phone number is listed right here. You can also email us at support at evetsites.com. Um, so that goes for anybody. If you're ever having trouble with the editor, you're running into frustrations, or you're finding that something isn't working like you think it should, please feel free to call us or send us an email before you get too frustrated. Um, we are here to help. We can always remotely connect to your computer, or we can just help you troubleshoot over the phone or via email, whatever is easier for you. Um, we do also have our help site. So if you're logged into your site, you can always just click on that help button, and you can search for topics here to find ways to help troubleshoot what's going on. OK, so we have um, another comment here, issues with the table for the hours table. Um, so if you want to give me some more specifics about what's going on, I can definitely help you with that. The hours table you can usually find through admin home if it's over in your common content. Your common content will either be on the left, the right, or possibly down at the bottom of your website. So if you come over to admin home, hover over administration, and go to site common content, that's where you're going to find your hours table. Um, for some reason, when you try to adjust it, it's wrapping the text in the cell. So you may want to check that your table is set to 100%. So if you come into your hours table and you right click and go to table properties, make sure that that does say 100% for you. Um, if it doesn't, you may run into where the cells are so small that the text doesn't have anywhere to go, so it's just kind of wrapping around. Um, it could also be an issue with the particular template that you're on, that there's not enough room and it's, it's causing it to go over and we can help you with maybe adjusting the font size um, or helping you resize the table. So if it is set to 100% right now and you're still running into that, um, please go ahead and tell me what your domain name is and then I can send you an email and we can work on getting that fixed. Um, we have a question here about uploading pictures. Do they have to be a certain format, size, or pixel in order to upload properly? Um, that's a great question. So if you go in to upload a picture, it does kind of tell you what's allowed. Um, the first thing you're going to see is this, in this uh, note here, only upload images that you own or have the license to use. Uh, I forgot to note that earlier, but you do want to make sure that when you're adding pictures to your website that you have a license to use them. Um, if you grab an image from Google and put it onto your website, there is code embedded in there, and you can get fined for that. So you want to make sure that you're only using pictures that you've taken on your own camera or that you have purchased. Um, so when you go to upload, it will tell you here what extensions are valid. So you can upload any picture that ends in this format. And then the max size is 20 megabytes, so pretty large. Um, and then basically you can upload anything that is this file type, this size or less, and you can just drag it or click Add Files. And if you ever run into any trouble with uploading a particular picture, uh, feel free to let us know and we can play around and, and try to save it as a different format for you. Um, but any of these will work for you. And the file would have to be pretty large for it not to get uploaded to the site. So uh, Beth or Corey, if I wasn't able to help you with the issue that you're having with the hours table and deleting the row, um, again, please feel free to add another question with your domain name and uh, your email address or your phone number, and I can get in touch with you personally. Um, or feel free to give us a call, too, whatever's easier for you, and we can help you out with that. It sounds like we may need to remotely log into your computer to see the exact issue that's going on, and then we can help you clear that up. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm going to stay on the line for just a little bit longer for any um, questions that you guys might still have. If you do forget to ask me a question and you remember it after the orientation, feel free to just give us a call at this number or email us at supportedevetsites.com. Um, we're also recording this session, so if you guys want to go back and rewatch it, it will be on our uh, help site as well as our YouTube channel, so you can go back and rewatch it.